Welcome to this edition of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at this. So, uh, I've done a couple uh, projects on printing these spinners. My grandkids turned me on to these, and uh, it's been very cool. Now, one of the pieces that it's focused around is these uh, 608ZZ bearings. And I usually buy these um, like 30 or 40 at a time because they're just handy to have around and they end up in all kinds of projects like my uh, camera slider projects, etc. However, one of the things, even in buying in volume, they're about 45 to 50 cents a piece, roughly. I, I, I think I can get the cost down. Actually, I've now started buying them by the hundreds. Uh, and, and that brings me at a cost point of roughly of about anywhere from 29 to 37 cents, depending on what kind I get. The fancier ones are about 37. Um, the cheaper ones are about 29. However, the, the piece is that the spinner takes four of them. So roughly, what we'll say if you buy them in smaller volumes, it's about two bucks. Now, one of the things, the outside uh, portions are simply meant for counterweights to, to spin. So one of the things, a nickel is roughly the size of this bearing. And so what I decided to do was to modify this model because I really like this gnarled um, uh, spinner model. Uh, that I've done a couple other videos on on some of my other channels. Uh, and and it, it, I have the open SCAD code for this, and so what I've decided to do is modify it to use nickels instead. So, in short, there are three nickels in each one of these as counterweights to spin. Now, the simple math on that is 15 cents a piece rather than 50 cents a piece. So, use, using the nickels is actually cheaper than uh, using the actual bearings as counterweights. So, one of the things that I needed to do was sort of experiment with how how do I fit the nickels in here. Now I do know that there's some spinners out there before somebody mentions it that 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 take nickels and they have like countersink things to put them in. But I tell you what, it's it's always a pain to try to fit something into a 3D printed object, you know, and screw it with another 3D printed. So, anyways, I like the idea of just actually countersinking these in, not really countersinking, but inserting them during the print operation and just as you see here now the piece is though plastic we really don't know so i can measure this i can put it in the model but i guarantee you it won't fit so you have to go through some iterations of that so how are some shortcuts so one of the things i wanted to do is take you guys through uh, a little bit of this uh, of how i do this how i you know stop the print do some test fits some changes so what I've done is I've sort of put together a video where I've gone a little bit bass backwards, if you would, here. Um, in the fact is, I'm showing you the end product here. I've got it all together. And then I'm going to show you now how I did it and some time lapses of this. So in case you want to do something like this or make some modifications, you know how to do it too. So I tell you what, let's go watch a little bit of time lapse of this starting. And then I'm going to cut in uh, with some other video and, and talk about it. Now, in the end, I've had some concerns about this. And I don't want to spoil the end. Uh, so I'm not going to talk about it here. But just stick through to the end. And, and But you know, it, actually, it, it came out pretty good. Not perfect. I'm going to have to make some modifications to the code before I put it out on Thingiverse. But by the time you see this, that will all have been done. So let's cut over to time lapse and let's see how I did this and let's get some tips and tricks. See you over there. Okay, so here we are back. We've, uh, we've now paused the print on this. And we're going to see about inserting the nickels. Now, one of the things I'm a little bit concerned of is the size of the hole for the nickel and they seem to be too small let's see i am going to have to scale up the size of that nickel hole by quite a bit nickel hole needs to be bigger okay so we're at the machine now one of the tips i'm going to share with you guys how i work this now i have set a pause in this but one of the things especially as i'm prototyping this that i don't know is will this nickel fit because again you can measure it but depending upon the plastic and everything you're using you may get various results so i've already had to kick this up about 0.4 millimeters uh, because the nickel wouldn't fit although i've measured it and with the inputs into open SCAD, it should so what i'm going to do is I'm going to actually pause the print and I'm going to hit the pause over here so what's going to happen now this is going to give me an opportunity to test this to see if it fits 
and it's a rather tight fit around the nickel but it does fit in so this is actually good so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this opportunity to see if I can pick these up and see if it all works out is I'm going to insert my nickels here so I've got so I've inserted nickels now this isn't the standard pause where I would put all three but I now know I've got a good size for my nickels and so I'm just going to hit the button and I'm going to tell it to resume printing. Continue print. And so I'm going to leave the nickels in there and see what happens. It should be fine because they're set a little bit below. Now one of the things that I do know uh, by looking at the percentage on the LCD over there is about how far it should be along. So I knew it about 40% because I knew, I, I knew, I know that there's 22 layers roughly from a percentage standpoint where I should stop the print and so this is sort of another tip so tip number one pause the print to do an early test that way you fail fast to move on and make changes um, and number two understand your number of layers versus your percent so you can actually see because there's no indicator on here at least that I see well actually there is um, I'm going to take a little bit of that back on the indicator, it does give me a Z height of 3.3 millimeters, so you could also use that or the percentages. But again, you can kind of figure out where that's at in the printing cycle to stick your coin in or whatever you're going to stick in. So let's go ahead and um, let's go back and watch and see when it gets to the um, pause point, and then we'll put more coins in. So let's wait to see you over there. Okay, we're back, and uh, it's at its pause position. Now, I'm not quite sure I'm going to be able to get um, three coins in here. I seem to be a little bit shy of three coins. I'm going to see what happens. So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to put these two in. Uh, because right now, what's going to do is going to um, actually do a top layer. So I've got two coins in. If I go with three, uh, I don't know what would happen if I actually went with three. I'm missing a nickel somewhere. I lost a nickel somewhere. I need to go find a nickel real quick. Okay, I found my last nickel. I left it in my other prototype, so... Uh, it's, these are a little bit proud. I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, I don't know if the nozzle is going to hit it and we're going to have a problem. But I've got three nickels in each and we're going to see because I'm going to restart it. So let's uh, see. Let's continue print. So, uh, it's so far. Let's watch it for a minute see what happens. I've also got the time lapse going. and So far it doesn't seem to be intruding on the nickels. Um because it should do a layer above them because we now only have two layers left to go uh, in the print. So this should actually lay two layers over top of the, the nickel to hold them in place. So let's see how that works. Well, actually, I think I stopped it at, at 21. So it's going to do 21, which would be one, one layer around the nickels. And so that might be enough to raise it up, and then it should go over. So... Um, I'm not sure how that's going to actually work. And then you guys can't see it too well. Let me come around this way. And uh, let me zoom you guys in on the action here. So you guys can see what's happening. Sorry, the fluid head of my tripod is getting a little old. But uh, again, it seems to be uh, working with uh, three coins. So... I'm a little bit surprised, actually, um, but it's worth a try, obviously. Let me pan you down a little bit more. I'm just hoping it doesn't act off. So you can see the the side-to-side -side motion here that's happening. You know, what this is doing is now creating that ring around the outside of the uh, thing. Now, I think, actually, we're having a little bit of problem here. You see right in there? Um, because I don't think it's adhering, but I could be wrong. I, we, uh, I don't think it's sticking to the top of the nickel, but I'm not 100% sure. I can't see much better than you guys can see. So 
So we'll just have to see how this comes out. I'm a little bit interested because one of the things I wanted to make the model a little bit higher, but um, I was having problems with the actual model itself. So I figured, uh, you know, because because I've got 0.6 at the bottom, 0.6 at the top. And my idea was is to make the structure a little bit taller because it is seven millimeters high, and then um, y you know have that. So that would actually put me at like I think between the stack of the coins and that at about seven point four millimeters. However, when I did that, some of the body didn't turn out in the open SCAD code. And to be honest with you, I was a little bit lazy and didn't want to go back through and find out what the originator of the code had done to. Uh, where it wasn't doing that. So in other words, it's not truly parametric. And so I figured, eh, it's close. And so I figured to give it a shot. So we'll see how it comes out here in, in a few minutes and see if it's worthwhile. I think that the nickels are going to be just a tad a little bit too proud. So let's uh, see if I can get in there. Let's see if it'll focus on this. No, nah, it's not really focusing. Sorry about that. It's just uh, too zoomed up, and it's. Uh, I don't know. It might work. Yeah, I think. Yeah, let's see. Let me zoom out and see. So let's bring this forward a little bit. And so. Yes, I will. It's not too bad. It's not as nice as I would want it to be. Uh, I think I'm going to have to do some more work before I put it up on Thingiverse because I'm not sure if you can tell here, um, but it looks like only about one layer actually did lay down, and it, the nickel, the ridge on the nickel, did push it up. I think this whole structure does need to be a little bit taller and I think I probably need to make this ring a little bit um, smaller in here too because I'm doing 0.85 or 85% of the size of the nickel here and that's what it's come out to be. I think I'll be able to salvage this one. It's not too bad. I think I can clean it up a little bit. Um, uh, but uh, anyways, hey, I, I tell you what, I, th this is really interesting. And again, before I put it up on Thingiverse, I'll definitely fix it. But I kind of wanted to share this with you of how to go about, um, you know, doing some of this. Uh, I know I've done some videos with inserting stuff in here in the past with the uh, camera slider and things like that. But I just thought this was a neat project to kind of show you guys uh, how to go about, you know, doing a prototype, kind of doing a few shortcuts and that kind of stuff. So hopefully this is of interest to you, and uh, hey, if it was, give it a big thumbs up. I appreciate it, and uh, hit me up in the comments if you got some suggestions on this. Always happy to hear about the suggestions, and if you have any questions, hit me up, and then i tell you what. Um, we'll go ahead and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.